concert music is a big part of our curriculum as orchestra teachers, and we want to try to pick the right music for our groups so that we can integrate the technique that we're learning at the beginning of class into something that we're going to perform either at a contest or for our parents and community. And Gaelic Castle is a great piece for younger orchestras, for beginning orchestras, for middle school orchestras, second year orchestras, because it's not that heavy on technique, so we can really work on and address fundamentals. We can take our technique skill building that we're learning at the beginning of class and directly apply it to something that we're doing as a group that we're gonna perform. The goal is to use Gaelic Castle as a vehicle to bridge that gap between our technique instruction and our concert piece instruction. So how many fundamental techniques can we work on here in Gaelic Castle? Well, tons of them. There's lots that we can do. You can go through the entire first season of teaching orchestra just about and apply just about everything here. Maybe not the off the string stuff, um, there, but just about everything else you can probably apply here. Let's think about some of the problems that we have in our beginning string classes and our second year orchestra classes where there's technique that we're trying to teach the students, but they're not picking it up. Um, we're working on certain nuances and certain things and they're able to do it for a little while, but then when they take it into the concert music, it kind of breaks down or it doesn't happen or whatever. When you get a piece of music along the same difficulty, you know, a lot of these grade one pieces, you can have really bad technique and the students can take it home and they can play it and they can still kind of make it sound like what it's supposed to be. You know, basically if they understand which finger goes down and that the bow moves back and forth, well, they can kind of create something that resembles Gaelic Castle and that's not what we want. So we'll take this hypothetical situation of a student going home to practice and they pull out Gaelic Castle and they run through the melodies a few times and their bows are sliding all over the place and they're playing wildly out of tune and gosh, the music's on their bed and they're leaning over playing on their music this way. Well, you know, that's fine. Just get out the practice card and write, I practice for 30 minutes and sign it. But is that really practice? Are they actually learning anything in that process? So if you can already play the music, why learn the technique? You know, why go the extra mile? Why hold your instrument right? Why hold your bow right? Why bow straight? Why keep a good left hand shape? Why do any of this stuff if you don't need to? So the idea is that we have to create some sort of accountability to where the students are looking to see if they're using the right techniques. That's why I like to create thoughtful exercises for my orchestras so that they're working on just the technique and they're not getting caught up in the melodies or whatever, like just using the bow a lot of the times will do the trick. And I also really like to use peer-to-peer -peer coaching. I like having them work with a partner. I like having one student play and the other student watch. And I like the other student to have critical feedback for the student that's playing. Okay, are they doing it right? Give them some things to look for. Hey, is their thumb bent? Hey, is their bow straight? You know, talk to them, tell them. That creates a lot of accountability because for some reason when I tell a student something, you know, it can go right over their head. But if their stand partner tells them something, well, they're gonna listen because they, they don't wanna lose face uh, in front of their stand partner. So I really like that peer-to-peer -peer coaching. I do it every day in class at all levels. Um, and in, in my season one videos and all of the demonstration videos, we have our students doing that peer-to-peer -peer coaching where one student does it, the other student watches and critiques, then we flip it around, have the other student do it, other student watches. That makes sure that everybody in the classroom is getting taught. So what do we target with our orchestra? I guess that depends on where your orchestra is at the moment. If it's a beginning orchestra, definitely wanna target straight bows. Are our bows moving straight? Or are we sliding our bows all over the place? Are we holding our instruments right? Do we have good setups? That's really important too. Do we have good left hand shape? All of these fundamentals matter and the music's not so hard that we can completely ignore our technique. They should be able to be able to do both. And so with some peer-to-peer -peer coaching, you know, coach them during the, the, the technical exercises, but then when we get into concert music, hey, pick these four measures, hey, are we holding our instruments right? All right, let's have the outside players play for four measures. Inside players, check on their setups and then flip it around, okay? Create some accountability. These accountability measures are really going to pay off because um, as we all know, especially if you teach higher level orchestras, eventually 
their technique is not good enough to be able to play the advanced music. So rather than waiting until their technique is totally shot to where they can't play any, any of the music that we're playing in class and they really have to remediate, um, we can create accountability from the beginning and get them to start doing it early so that um, they're more comfortable as they progress through orchestra all the way through high school, university, whatever. I'm really fortunate to have great feeders uh, to my program, and so my students come up with really good technique, and we usually don't run into those problems. My students are usually hitting the ground running, just ready to go. But every once in a while, we get transfer students coming in, and they come in as a freshman, and they audition for me, and I have to tell them, like, hey, you know, I know you're a freshman, but you're really playing like a second-year student, so we're really going to have to catch up, and you're really going to have to work on your technique because, you know, you're bowing from the shoulder, and your bow hand isn't looking too good, and, you know, are you willing to put in the time? Or we, basically, it's going to be like starting over for you. Are you willing to learn the right way? And if that answer is yes, then I'll work with them. And if not, you know, hey, Godspeed, you know, go try something else. Another thing that you should really probably focus on here in Gaelic Castle is intonation. So, you know, work on sliding into pitch, work on developing that culture of intonation with your students. Again, there's nothing too crazy here. There's nothing too difficult here. You can get this to sound in tune. There's a lot of open string stuff. There's a, there's a lot of things to listen to and tune to, and you can teach your students and train their ears. In the teaching companion, we go over a lot of this stuff. You know, we have finger patterns so that they're learning how to play in tune. We have just basic bowings, you know, whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes. But it's not just, hey, can you play a quarter note? It's can you start just below the middle and can we all play quarter notes with the same bow length? That's really the question. You know, can we play eighth notes in the middle of the bow? So when you're going through these exercises in the Teaching Companion, I also recommend that peer-to-peer -peer coaching so that everybody's using the same technique. You know, you're just one person. It's really hard to get around and teach everybody. Our classes are getting bigger and bigger every year, and we're getting less and less help. So um, it's, I, you know, outsource it. Have your, have your students help you teach, peer-to-peer -peer coaching, you know. And, and also, when you're coaching, sometimes you learn more than when you're actually playing. You know, you're watching somebody else do it right, or you're watching somebody else do it wrong. Oh, that's what you're supposed to be doing. Or, oh, that's how you fix it, you know, and then it helps you. If you're going to take anything away from this video, I hope that it's to create accountability in your classroom. Don't just have your students go home and kind of hack through it and kind of sound like it. You know, teach them the right techniques. It's easy enough to where every student in your classroom should be able to use this piece as a vehicle to learn fundamentals and apply it to concert music. In the next video, we're gonna talk about how to keep your orchestra together. This is a common problem with younger orchestras is that they can play by themselves, but when you put them all in a group, they all kind of tend to go at independent speeds. So how do you get a group like that to play together? And a lot of times, um, all our beginning classes are spread out between lots of different class periods. Some teachers are even fortunate enough to have homogenous classes where they just have a cello class and a couple of violin classes and a bass class and a viola class, and that's great. But what happens when you put them all together into one ensemble? Are, they, are the cellos going to be able to stay with the violins if they're not used to listening to them in class? So in the next video, I hope to give you some strategies on how to keep your students together when playing Gaelic Castle. I hope to see you then.